All right, I'm going to tell you guys a, uh, a deer hair popper, kind of Dave Whitlock style. Um, you know, if you do any uh, bass fishing, a nice deer hair popper is, is just about as good as it gets for, for fishing uh, for big largemouth on the surface. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. Um, so the hook that we're going to use for this guy, um, I like to tie these guys a lot on, uh, you know, your, your classic bass bug stinger hooks, but a lot of those have pretty light wire. And if you're fishing in heavy cover, um, I like to, uh, to tie them on, on stainless saltwater hooks. And that's what I've got here. This is like a 2 watt, um, you know, stainless hook. So we're going to pop that guy in there. And first thing I do is just uh, attach the thread right up there by the point of the hook. And give from the point back to the barb a nice <clears throat> base coat of thread. And very important if you're bass fishing to um, have a weed guard on there. I'm going to do a just a double loop of uh, of monofilament. You know, cut yourself a piece, so maybe about six inches long, and uh, and double it over like that, um, and then just tie the two tag ends in, kind of where you gave the base coat to. And two weed guards are definitely better than one. Um, and this guy's just going to sit back here until we finish the fly. Um, all right, the next thing that's going to get tied in is we're going to take uh, a couple of uh, uh, rooster necks and, and do kind of a, a splayed tail with them. So I'm going to gather up uh, about six or eight uh, nice, wide, webby, uh, neck hackles, a couple different colors. The whole color scheme of, of this popper is kind of a brown, white, and yellow frog. Um, so we're going to take a, a brown neck here and pick out a pair of uh, nice wide um, neck hackles. A couple of white ones. We'll do four white ones. And then a couple of yellow or yellow grizzly ones, too. And uh, it doesn't really matter too much. It's more aesthetics on which color goes in and out and, and vice versa. I usually do the lightest colored ones on the inside, followed up by the next lightest colored ones. So you take take the white ones, those will be on the, the inside like this, and then the yellow ones go like that, and then brown on the inside. Um, so just kind of line up the tips of the feathers and make a nice little bundle, kind of like that. And I probably want these guys maybe about uh, four inches long off the back of those. So bring your thread back up to the point of the hook. And you're going to want to tie these in, all four of these guys, in at once. And you want to tie them in <clears throat> on the sides of the shank so they splay out nicely. So just kind of hold those on the side of the hook. Loose wrap all the way around couple of loose wraps and then do some tight ones and just wind straight back towards the barb. That's pretty good. Now if one of them spazzes out on you, you might want to unwind and, and redo it. Um, and we're just going to do the same thing the other side. Do white, yellow, brown on the outside, like that. And just kind of line up the tips so they're about even. Same thing again, loose wrap, a couple of loose wraps, and then some gradually tighter ones. And if you do that, they don't have the tendency to 
roll over and, and move all around if you do that loose wrap truck. That's pretty good. And then just take all these guys and once you get them tied down pretty good, you just trim all these butt ends all at once. And maybe cover it up with some real tight thread wraps. Just like that. Um, one thing you might want to add in too is some, some flash. Never hurts to have a little bit of that in there, so we'll put some of that. Um, if you take uh, about twice as much as you need, as far as length goes, we want the flash to be about as long as the feathers. Take about twice as much as you need. There's always a handy little trick. You take that doubled length, wrap it around the thread, then it's very easy to control where you put that flash, just like that. Usually put it right in the middle, right in between, about the same length as, uh, as the feathers. Okay. Now, here comes the, the deer hair part of it. We're going to use three different colors. We're going to use uh, kind of a white color for the belly, uh, brown for the top, and then we're going to put some, uh, some little black uh, spots on the top, even a nice brown frog look. So what I'm going to do is, is uh, the belly first. And what I'm going to do is chop off a pretty liberal amount of white deer hair. Trim it as close to the hide as you can. That's pretty, pretty important. That's where the most buoyant hair is and it's going to make your popper float nice and high. And take a comb and comb out all of the under fur. There's a lot of under fur and short hairs that really don't do you much good in there and you want to take them out. And if this deer hair isn't really, if it's real uneven, you might want to give it a quick kind of hand stack. Just pull out the, the real long ones. You can stack it if you want to, but it really doesn't make too much of a difference. Just like that. Um, before you do put any deer hair on here, you should put some I like to use Zappa Gap for this, really sure up um, this little part because when we pack that deer hair on, we're going to be <clears throat> pushing against it. And if you, if you super glue it down, it, it really won't go anywhere. You, you won't risk pushing these feathers and stuff off the shank of the hook. And this first bunch of hair that we're going to put in, we're going to have like a, a little muddler minnow type collar on there. So we want to keep these tips uh, nice and even and just flip this guy over um, upside down and we want the white obviously on the belly and uh, just kind of hold it like that make a loose wrap around the hair and then pull straight down and if you do it right you should have pretty good coverage with the butt pieces kind of spreading on the lower half of the hook and you know these uh, these tips will kind of form like a nice little nice little collar. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the top with the brown. Trim off a pretty big chunk of brown deer hair here. Comb out the under fur. Give it a little stack. And then you want pretty much the butt ends of these to match up with the butt ends of the white so you have a nice even collar. About like that. And same thing, just a loose wrap all the way around and just pull straight down couple of tight wraps is all you need. And the whole time you're doing that, if you hold that deer hair here, it'll have the tendency to stay in one spot and not migrate over. So you have, you know, you'll end up with a nice fly that's, that's white on the belly and, and brown on the top. And one last thing, we'll put a little bit of black on top. Probably the smallest bunch of hair, maybe about half the amount of the brown and 
or half the amount of the white, just a little bunch. And once again, tips even with the brown. Pull straight down. A couple of tight wraps. Always pulling straight down. All right, so we got our first couple wads of deer hair on there. And, and from here, what you want to do is just kind of take your thumb and your forefinger and just kind of pull everything back. Maybe give it a little pull with the, with the thread and then move the thread right up in front. And now we're ready for our next uh, couple bunches of hair. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take uh, another bunch of white except this time we're going to cut the tips off so we, when we go to trim this fly we don't get confused between the stuff we want to trim and the stuff we don't. So I'm going to take those, this white, and trim the tips off. Just like that. And do the same thing. Flip the vise over, tie this on as the belly, Loose wrap right in the middle of the hair, pull straight down, a couple of tight wraps. And you're going to get some migration. Some of the white is going to get mixed in with the brown and vice versa. And it just adds to the uniqueness of uh, tying these deer hair flies. You really don't know what you're going to get exactly until you trim it. Take another pretty sizable bunch of brown. Trim out the uh, under fur and trim the tips. Lastly, put a little piece of black in there, and when you trim these, it'll have nice little black spots going along the back. Now, now that you got that second bunch of hair on here, what you want to do is take your, your, other, your other hand and kind of reach in behind the fly and get, grab a hold of the shank of the hook right where you tied those feathers in, that big lump that we super glued, and hold right there. You just take your thumb and your forefinger and just push back on it. This is how you get those, that, these deer hair bugs nice and tight and real buoyant. Um, the more hair and the tighter you pack it, um, the nicer it'll turn out when you trim it. And so just pull everything, once you packed it, uh, you just pull everything back, bring your thread up to in front, of those, in front of that deer hair, and repeat the process all the way until you get to the eye of the hook. Not a bad idea. You don't have to do it every single series of deer hair, but maybe a few of them. Take some head cement or some zappa gap and just put a tiny little bit in there and that'll keep that deer hair from from spinning. It'll kind of lock it to the hook and make for a much more durable fly.
Now once you get up uh, maybe about two-thirds the way up we're going to add some uh, some round rubber legs and we're just going to take uh, you know maybe about three of them and I wouldn't bother to uh, to you know undo these from their keep them stuck together um, when you tie these in um, makes it a little bit easier trimming this deer hair around them you always risk uh, you know trimming stuff that you don't want to trim and you don't want to trim these guys so I would wait until you uh, kind of get done the fly to really pull those legs apart and have them all over the place but just take three rubber legs and time in so they're kind of out, outstretched coming out from the sides like that and then uh, two more uh, series of bunches of hair we should be pretty close to being done this guy As you get up towards the front of the vise, you want to be, ideally you want to be tying with deer hair that's nice and long. Um, and all the stuff that you get and might have on hand might not be all that long. Um, but as you get up towards the front of the hook, the way we're going to trim this guy, you really want to have the longest hair all the way up towards the front. Just because uh, you want a nice high front on this guy for this popper to uh, you know, go ahead and make make a lot of noise and stuff. So, as you're tying this, keep that in mind that you want to have your longest, nicest hair up front here towards the eye of the hook. All right, that should just about do it. I think that's all the deer hair that we really need on here. And just go ahead and you don't really need to form a head with the thread or anything, just maybe a couple of wraps in front and then a quick whip finish. We're going to reattach our thread to install the weed guard on there after we trim it. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim half of this with a razor blade and you know just a razor blade and and the other half with scissors um, but the first thing I'm going to do is just trim the bottom flat you just take that's what we use the razor blade for just trim that guy flat be careful not to go back too far and get kind of our, our collar there but just something just like that works pretty good and then uh, for the front, be real careful. I don't like to trim the front of this hardly at all until I get the back um, kind of where I want it. And the first thing I do 
is just kind of separate the butt ends that we want to trim from the tips that we don't. So just kind of pull, stroke those, uh, you know, that nice collar back and pull the butt ends forward. And then usually do the top first and trim on a downward angle, kind of tapering back. Just like that, and then just rotate the vise, keep that same angle, and just keep trimming. Don't cut your rubber legs. That would not be good. That's pretty good. That's a, a, about the right shape, I think, for the size of this hook. Um, you know, just a nice, uh, gradually tapered body. But it's real important that you keep this stuff nice and long, because that's really, the, the front of this uh, deer hair up here is really what's going to make this popper really make some noise, and, and, and that's important. And the next thing we're going to do is take, uh, you know, some silicone sealant, you can use head cement. The better stuff to use is something like this because it's flexible. And what we're going to do is just take a little bit, squeeze some onto your finger, and then we're just going to rub it into the deer hair up here. And just kind of keep pushing it back, and as this stuff sets up, it's going to um, kind of make everything stick together up there. And being that this front part is sealed, it's also going to make this fly pop better. As if, if, if it weren't glued, um, it just doesn't quite make as much noise. So that's pretty good. And then we're just going to take an angle like this and just even this stuff up with the body. Just like that. Okay, we're almost done here. Next thing we're going to do is cut a couple little eyeball sockets. We're going to stick some, some doll eyes in here. Something like that. Put a little drop of super glue or silicone in there, and then just drop a little doll eye into that socket. Just like that. It, it might take a couple of a couple of coats of silicone to really get this guy to lean back and kind of become one with uh, with the rest of the body. Um, we're going to do the same thing on the other side, put another little eyeball socket over here. Okay, last thing we do is remember that weed guard that we tied in back there. We're going to kind of pull that forward, trim, trim that little loop there, and put this guy back in the vise, reattach our thread up here.
and take one of those pieces of monofilament and just kind of tie it in right on the sides of the hook. You can play with, uh, you know, how wide this monofilament loop is. You certainly want it going past the point of the hook, um, just so when you bring this stuff through the timber and the lily pads and stuff like that, that it just kind of bounces right off and doesn't get hooked up. Just tying that monofilament kind of on the sides of the shank of the hook. Just a couple of wraps. Doesn't take much. We'll glue it the rest of the way. And put one on the other side of the point of the hook too. Quick whip finish. Now you can take these rubber legs and uh, you know some guys like them real long. I like them on a fly like this maybe uh, about three inches long and then just separate them just like that. Do the same thing to the other side. Trim those weed guards. And you got your uh, brown frog popper ready to uh, get wasted by a big black bass.